Hey everyone, welcome back to our 8-week course on how to build a basic FTC robot. If you haven't watched the previous videos in our series yet, please go ahead and do that before watching this one. Today we're going to be talking about ARMS. So first we're going to talk a little bit about ARMS. So ARMS are essentially attachments that rotate out of the robot to reach outside of the robot. They can be used in almost every game and usually are attached to either a claw or intake. So there are a few different designs of arms that I'm going to talk, talk about. So first there's the single arm, which has a motor or servo rotating an arm. It has a very small range, and you can only increase the reach by 15 to 18 inches because of robot size limitations. However, it's very simple to build and a great starting point for beginning teams. Then there's the four bars design. This type of arm uses two stages to have farther reach. The first stage is rotated by motor. The second stage keeps its angle relative to the ground, achieving this through chains, pulleys, or linkages. Then there's the double reverse four-bar. This is more complicated to build than the four-bar arm, and is basically two four-bars linked together. It utilizes gears and bars in order to reach high heights. So the second type of mechanism that increases the reach of the robot are linear extenders. These can be used in almost every game, similar to arms, and they convert rotational motion of the motor to linear motion, either vertically or horizontally. And it allows you to reach game elements you can't reach, or pick up a game element at ground level and increase the height of the game element to deposit at a higher level, or do something else at the higher level. So these linear extenders are, made, are usually made up of different pieces that slide parallel to each other in order to create um, linear motion. So one type of linear extenders are linear slides. These are made up of a set of slides that slide along each other. One type of these slides are drawer slides, which you can find in many drawers. And they have multiple stages that allow for expandability. So you can allow for a long reach by adding more stages to the slide. However, linear slides need to be rigged in order to convert the rotational motion into the linear motion. So they can either be rigged using belt or string. If in, each, in both scenarios, the belt or string move along pulleys, and there is a spool or a pulley that is rotated by the, by the motor that um, drives this, these linear slides. A string is usually pulled by a spool at one end and fixed at the other end, and this causes the entire linear um, slide to extend when the spool is rotated one way. And um, another, the, uh, one of the problems with uh, strings is that it can jam the linear slides if there's too much tension. Slides are usually retract either using like elastics using surgical tubing or rubber bands, which spring back once the spool is released or using double spools, which is when one string pulls um, the, one string is attached to the spool and when the string rotates is, and is tightened, the linear slides extend and when the other string is tightened, when the spool rotates the other way, the linear slides are retracted. This allows um, the linear slides to retract and extend in more controlled manner and has less jamming. The second type of linear extenders are rack and pinions. These use a gear called a pinion to move a rack side to side. And a rack is basically a um, bar with teeth on the top of it. And the pinion gear interacts with the rack's teeth to move the piece side to side. The gear is usually powered by the motor and the rack is attached to the moving end. However, there's some cons to a rack and pinion as it doesn't have that much range of motion because the range, its range of motion is only as long as the rack can be. Um, rack and pinion gears can't handle high load, but are pretty simple to make. The third type of linear um, linear extenders are linear actuators, and these convert energy from motors into linear motion, either up or down. Um, linear actuators are pretty high torque, and they use a screw, which drives a nut up and down. However, linear actuators are a little more expensive, as and they don't have that much range but they are good for high torque situations where the robot has to hang. Thank you for watching our fifth class in our Intro to FTC Engineering video series. This is a seven week course, so make sure to watch the next two videos when they're released. The next video and the next, when released next week will be posted right here. All the links that we talked about will be in the description. Thank you for watching, we hope you learned a lot and we also hope that you continue your FTC journey and continue learning a lot about um, FTC engineering.